got us a uh, makeup air unit here that's not one to run. You want to see what's causing it to drop out. It's been reset a couple times and uh, keeps tripping back out. This definitely is one of the nicer ones I've seen. Discharge 32, room 78. And it was on heating. We've got a supply low temp twice in a row. Again, and it's been a while. So, supply low temp, that's what's going on. Okay, we're checking our set points. So far, this thing's pretty user friendly. Currently, it looks like its active set point is 50. Supply temp's 36. Heat's running like it was when we got here. Outside air was 22. Discharge was 32. Cold coil 22. Room 78. System on heating. So it's pretty much the same thing both times. Both times it looks like it just did not bring on the heat. It looks like we're in low fire, but you can see we got one manifold right here. It comes down to that one. High fire would be this bigger one. We've got more, and pretty much the same thing over here. So we're running in low. We don't have anything in high. Just need to find out why it's not wanting to active supply set point 50 supply temp 36 so why are we not going into higher fire I don't get that okay it just brought on the bigger set of burners let's see if there's something malfunctioning when that's running so far everything looks fine a little interesting here. We're set for 69. Room temperature is 84. Stats set for 69. Supply temp set point. Active set point 50. Supply temp 50. Room reset 90 and 50 minimum maximum. Fan speed's 100%. Supply low air alarm. Supply is below 35 degrees. Alarm delay 300 seconds. Lockout cooling when outside air is below 55. Two degree differential. Heating lockout when it's above 70. Cold coil set point 55. Cold coil temperature is 22. Source 55. Okay, basically what we came up with, it was sensing temperature on the inside. It has a, a stat that reads the room temperature down there, and that's where it was doing its outside reset at, uh, based off room temp. Problem with that is, the lowest temperature this is allowed to go down to, discharge temperature, was 35 degrees for maximum of five minutes. 
if it fell below that, it'd go out on a low temp alarm. Well, the machine or wasn't programmed smart enough to know that, okay, yes, it's 76 degrees inside in the room, which was what we were earlier, now we're only 69, but we have 76 degrees and the air was set up for like, say, 50, it's figuring, I don't need heat, why should I run heat? But even though it was programmed to shut down when the duct temperature below, went below 35 degrees, it didn't do anything to, uh, to keep that from going below it. So it was just focusing on that room temperature. So what I ended up having to do was coming in and actually going to our set point and going down to our source and putting it on local. So now I've told it to go ahead and try to maintain a 50 degree uh, discharge air temp with a minimum of 48, whereas before it was 50. And now it's able to pretty well hold the temperature like it's supposed to. It's just one of them goofball things. The supply air now is at 55. And uh, you know it's doing a pretty good job. Whereas before it get down below that 32 mark, and it did nothing to try to maintain it. And uh, after five minutes, it'd go into lockout. But uh, there's our outside temp, there's our cold temp, and then our room temp. So it's supply air is 57. So it's actually maintaining a decent temperature now. We're going to try this first, see how that works. Um, that was pretty much the recommendation from the factory. There really wasn't a whole lot of other things we could do. Uh, besides lowering the temperature that it would lock out at. And last thing you want there is, is for there to be a day where they're not here creating all that heat and you bust all your pipes inside when you're uh, below freezing. So that's, that's what we got. We went ahead and got the filters taken out and getting those cleaned out down below because we can't really do it up here. And then uh, we got to get some new air filters for it. But pretty nice machine. It's uh, got an actual heat exchanger instead of direct fire. And uh, it's responding like you would figure it would do. Also has dehumidification. Got hot gas bypass up there. Pretty, pretty neat system. It's the first one I've seen like this. It's got uh, free drive on the motor. So it's pretty nice. Well, hopefully you didn't get as bored as my dog did here. Here's a little background on this call. Basically, it's a production facility that uh, runs, obviously, 24-7, and they need humidity control, heat, cooling, both uh, in all seasons. They have full-time maintenance people that can switch the machine over from local to remote thermostat. The remote thermostat would be more useful when they're running the air conditioning so that they can maintain the temperature down below. This is bringing 100% outside air in and no return air coming from inside the building at all. So they're going to need to use that inside thermostat when it's in cooling mode, but not necessarily when it's in heating mode. In the wintertime, they're going to maintain a 50 degree discharge temperature, you know, just like a traditional system would be, so it's not a huge deal and uh, don't really need much of anything else. That temperature is going to hold pretty good there. Um, but when you're in the uh, cooling season, that's when they're going to have to have that other thermostat. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I appreciate everyone taking the time to watch it. Don't forget to check the descriptions down below for links to anything that you might have seen in the video that you might have questions on. Till next time, we'll catch you on the next one.